the Monster Misfits guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these screaming skull horns. So it's fairly simple. Um, there is a couple of different ways that you can do these. Now these skulls are rigid foam so that after these things really harden they will take a beating. But I also made, I poured up a foam skull. So we've got rigid foam and we got Foam at three foam. So they're both the same skull, just different materials. So, since I've already made two rigid foams, I think I will make a soft foam skull. And what I do is I go to Harbor Freight and I get this drill. It is a Warrior 12 volt drill. And we're gonna dissect this bad boy. All right, so there you go. So with it apart, the only thing you're gonna do is take that orange piece out, no good. The rest of it I use. Now the, the reverse and everything like that, I still use, but uh, it's just there to fill a gap, that's all that is. Then I'll take this. That's it. That's the whole mechanism there. As you can tell, I've done did the, I've done did two of these already. So you don't need those. And if any of this falls out, it's no big deal. It goes right back in. It's not hard to uh, put it all back together. All right, so there we, there we have that. So you got a black and a red, that's all you need. And we have 12 volt car horns from Harbor Freight. Now I went ahead and ordered a bunch of these, but uh, they only had three in stock, but I got a bunch more on order. So now what you gotta do is figure out uh, your bracket. So we're gonna put this back together Then we're just going to kind of hold it together. Kind of right. All right. So now the back of this drill here has a hole all the way through it to the other side. And we're just going to use a bracket and we're going to put it through this thing here. So this is just a thin piece of metal and I will bend it back like so. So it'll be like that. So I've already made a couple of these. I don't have the exact measurement on these, but I'll just guess at it. So what we did was we cut these down to almost to the back of the drill itself. So there we go. Now we got this little piece of stiff bracket on the back, cut at the back of the drill itself. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a drill bit. Let's see. And we're gonna do some pallet holes in this. I'm gonna drill one on this side and one on that side. And I just simply take it and almost at the back of the drill, it's kind of my guide, is I drill a hole in it. All right, 
So here we got that. And we'll spread it out a little bit. And we'll attach our car horns. So I hope you can see this all right. I know it's not very, very close, but I hope you can see it. And we're just gonna attach the nut on the back of this bracket. Now the metal I'm using for this uh, bracket is bendable. It's, it's stiff, but you can still be able to bend it. So once you get it all together, you can still adjust, you're able to adjust your horns. Okay, so there's all of our screws back in, and these here are mounted up there, however you, however you want to mount them. Now that with this slotting aside and the thin metal, it is going to be a little loose, but I will show you how to put a buffer in that so that it doesn't move. And we'll do that at the end because we're still going to be moving these around once we fit our skull and stuff like that. So now we're going to wire this up. Now this is a real thin gauge wire. This is like maybe a 16 gauge wire that's in here. And I am using Pari 12 gauge wire on it. It doesn't really matter. So how I do this is I put jumpers on this and I'll show you why I put jumpers on. Okay, there's a jumper there and we'll put one at the top and then we'll wire it up and I'll show you how to do that, so. Okay, there's how it's wired up. So I just ran two jumpers there. I ran one lead from the drill itself to the bottom and one lead from the drill itself to the top. And that will get you connection all the way across and all that good stuff. Now I've used all these fancy connectors and blah, blah, blah with this and I use heat shrink and stuff on there. But believe it or not, the best thing I found to keep these wires together and keep them from corroding is this right here, your best friend, your hot melt glue gun. And that's what we'll use. So I've used the connectors and the connectors have has, uh, wore out on me. They have um, split and uh or they, they just wear out and they don't stay tight so that can create an issue if your horn stops it's probably just in the wiring somewhere or the battery okay so there there there's that so now our connectors is done and what i do is i'll hook up hook one of the batteries up to it just to make sure uh, that everything's connected good. So now we know we got it good and connected. All right, so our, ne our next thing is, is determine which skull we want to do. We want to use the flex foam skull or do we want to use the rigid foam skull? Now I've, I've used two with rigid foam and it is fine. This time we're going to use uh, flex foam and put our skull on here. So what I do is you see the natural on these skulls here, the natural teeth line is I cut these out 
and I'm going to cut a section of this out and slide that right down over top of that. So how I do that is I just basically turn this up on the skull and kind of get me a, a center line. I just mark it out. Nothing fancy, just make a mark on it like that. And we'll cut a, I don't know, probably a two inch dish out of this. Okay, so that's about where we want it. Something like that and uh, just put it on there. And now it's covered up that hole and you still have plenty of room for your trigger finger. So I don't think it looks too bad. Now you want to adjust your horns, however you want your horns to sit. And uh, it won't look bad. Okay, so now you remember when I told you that the bracket will be a little bit loose? And what I'll do is I'll put uh, hot melt glue in that slot. And what that slot will do is it will form like a cushion, just like motor mounts on these horns. And we will just go ahead and hot melt glue this thing down since it's, uh, this is just foam. You can use epoxy, you can use hot melt glue, but with this uh, foam here, it's real porous. So that hot melt glue will get in there real good and it will help hold this to your uh, drill. Good. The horn's right on it. And there you go. So that's but that's your basics on one of these. Okay, so we got that going on. Now it's all nice and secure. This this isn't going anywhere unless you throw it up against the wall or something. Of course, you don't want to do all that. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to latex this skull. Is we're just going to pour some late, or uh, we're going to brush some latex on him. And this will help. It's just easier to paint, in my opinion. Uh, you don't have to do this, but uh, I like doing this. All right, there it is. So now we got our latex on there, it's pretty dry. So now we're gonna take it and we're gonna paint this all flat black. I mean, you don't have to, you can paint it any color you want, but for this uh, tutorial, we're gonna paint it all flat black. We'll be right back. Okay, so we totally blacked this thing out and I'm thinking we're gonna do something a little different. So I'm thinking about maybe putting this on there little hair piece and calling it uh, my trumpet horn I <laughs> get it trumpet horn anyway I think that might be a pretty cool little idea just something different you know just uh, something different anyway let's uh, glue this bad boy on here
So there we go. That's it, guys. I mean, that, that, it's done. Now you can take this further. You can put lights in its eyes. You can add lights to the horns if you want to. It doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it at this because there is a little light down here at the bottom on these drills. And uh, if you can see it in the camera, it lights up the bottom of the teeth, and I think that's just fine. Anyway, that's uh, kind of my version of this. So now what I'll do is figure out, I've got some of this sports uh, wrap, and now I want to wrap the handle, and I want to figure out what I want to wrap, what color I want to put on here. I got blue, I got blue, green, pink, and purple. So I've already used these two colors. So I think I'm going to use this dark purple in this just to kind of give it something a little different and this stuff sticks to itself so you should be good and what this does is it help it'll stick to itself and it'll also cushion it'll cushion this handle you don't really need it it's just an added feature that I kind of enjoy and it just adds a little bit of collar to your prop to your horn so there we go so there's our trumpet horn i think he turned out pretty good and uh guys don't be afraid to make one of these yourself and I'll go ahead and uh, give you an overall look on this thing so you can see what it does. All right, guys, now that we've got it all together, I'm gonna show you what we got done. And this is our take on a uh, clown horn or I call them skull screamers. And this is our new uh, trumpet horn. I think it's kind of cool. Something different. Got him some hair on there. And uh, we did the purple handle on it. So anyway, I hope this was informative on your next adventure of building you a uh, clown horn or a skull screamer, death horn, whatever it is you want to call it. Like I said, we used uh, foam at three foam on this one here. So this one's soft versus our other ones. So these are the exact same mold, just different uh, products that we use in it. We used rigid foam in this one, so this one's hard, and we used a soft foam in this one, so this one's a softer foam. Uh, it's not hard or anything, and th they both work. I uh, think uh, you can't go wrong with either one. You can use soft foam or rigid foam. Uh, this is foam at three I get from the engineer guy. And this is uh, just a rigid foam, part A and part B. I think it's six pound I get from the engineer guy. Or you can get it from Reynolds, whichever, whoever has it in stock, if you can find it out. Anyway, so the first video I showed you, the first two I made, and this is my third one I've made. And uh, I kind of enjoy making these, and these ought to make a good addition to our haunt this year. Even though we've only got a couple weeks left, I think this will certainly be useful in our hunt. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoy. Go out and make you a couple of these or whatever for your hunt. And if you don't want to make them, go over and check out the Haunted Hills Productions. He sells the version of the Death Horn, and uh, you can get them there. And I think they're like 110 bucks or something like that. Uh, just go check them out, and uh, he'll make you one right up. But if you got all the products and you want to make them yourself, there you go. I just showed you how to do it. And uh, I think it's going to be a good little addition to our hunt for years to come. And uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to go check out my Trier Brothers as David the Weird Kid Show. Keith the Cobwebs and Candlesticks. Come over and check out Monster Misfits uh, Facebook group and stuff. And uh, show us your builds. We'd love to see what you come up with, what materials you use, where you got them. We are an informative channel and we just enjoy 
uh, teaching other people things and learning ourselves. So when we teach you guys how we did it, we're learning ourselves. So anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. Have any questions, put them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to get back and explain everything to you if you need a little bit more detailed in what I did. So there you go. There's our version of the Skull Screamer. These are, this one here is called the Trumpet Horn. So this is probably gonna be a unique one and probably gonna be the only one, but there it is. Anyway, guys, I got to put these on charge and get them ready for tomorrow night. I uh, hope you enjoy, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Keep it creepy.